Hello, I'm Eric Rano, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com, the free website for everything Photoshop and Lightroom. In this video, I'm going to add a paint splash effect to this portrait. So let's jump into Photoshop and see how it's done. So here I am in Photoshop. I've got my image all ready to go. I've gone over to Photolia to grab this image of a young lady. And what I'm going to do is add some paint splashes to it. Now, the first thing I need to do, of course, is I need to get some paint splashes. So I've gone over to Photolia again, and I've actually chosen two that work really well together. Now, what I need to do is bring these together into my original document. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Select All, and then Edit and Copy, and then back on my image, and I can go Edit and Paste. There's one. So I'm going to press Control or Command T to transform. I'm going to transform this around just so as I can make it where I want it to be, or roughly where I want it to be at least, something along those lines. I'm using this one to fill in that left-hand side. There we go. Something like that. I'm going to reduce the opacity just so I can see what's going on. And I want this just a little bit bigger. I'm sort of looking at her eyebrow there and the way that this splash goes and her cheek as well. I'm going to click the tick. Let's go and get the other one, that curved one. And again, Control or Command A to select all, Control C to copy, and then back on my image, Control V to paste. I'm going to click OK there. Control T to transform. And I actually want this the other way around, I think. So first of all, I'm going to right click and choose flip horizontally. And I can bring this up and I can again put this one where I want it bring down the opacity so as I can see what I'm doing. Control or Command minus, just to zoom out a little bit as well. I'm throwing a lot of keyboard shortcuts your way. All right, there we go. Let's bring this around. That's looking reasonably good. It's kind of how I want it, but not exactly. But that's okay, we'll deal with that in just a minute. But you can see we've got the general splash the way that I want it. I'm gonna click the tick. I'm going to bring these both up to 100%. Now to make a selection of these, I'm going to go over to the channels. So I'll turn the top one off for a second, and you can see we've got this straight splash. Let's go over to channels, and we can see that I've got an RGB, which is the composite, and a red, green, and blue. And I'm looking for the one with the highest contrast, which in this case is red. So I'm going to right click on that and choose duplicate channel. I'm going to call this straight splash. There we go. Now to give this a little bit more oomph on my mask or my selection a little bit later, what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert that. So let's turn the visibility of this one on. I'm going to press Control or Command I to invert it because it's the white bits that I'm interested in. I'm then going to make a little bit of a levels adjustment here. Control or Command L and just to boost the whites and dull the darks, just so it's a bit more contrasty and uh, I make a selection exactly the way that I want it. I want a heavy selection down the left-hand side here, but I want these bits to be slightly opaque, and so that's what I'm looking for here. There we go. That's looking that good. I'm gonna click OK. I'm gonna go and do exactly the same with the other splash, the curved splash back into my channels, find the one of highest contrast, again is red, right click, duplicate channel, and I'm gonna call this one Curve Splash. There we go. And again, invert it, let's make sure it's selected first of all, and invert it, Control or Command I, and then Control or Command L, and do a quick levels adjustment on that one as well. There we go, I'm just watching where my pieces of opacity are. There we go, that's looking good. Click OK. Now I can make a selection of these. The whitest parts will be the bits that I select first. In fact, the only bits that I'll select in this case. But I need to add the two together. That's easier than it may sound. First of all, let's do the curved splash. So I'm gonna press Control or Command on my keyboard and hover over the thumbnail and you can see that I've got this pointy finger with a dotted square. That means I'm going to select the pixels, the lightest, brightest pixels on this layer. 
and that's exactly what I want. So let's click down and you can see that I've made that selection. Now if I come to the thumbnail of the straight splash, and again press the control, I get my square, but I'm also going to press the shift key as well, and then I get this plus in the middle. That means it's going to add to the selection. So I click down again, and now I've got a selection of both. To make a new alpha channel of that, I just come down here, click on this icon, and sure enough now I have this one nice alpha channel. Good. You can press Control D to deselect if you wish, but I actually need a copy of that. So I'm going to come onto my thumbnail again, press Control and click. And sure enough, I've selected all the brightest pixels. Click RGB, back to layers. And now I can turn this one off and I can actually throw it away now. Don't need that. Don't need that. Now I'm not sure that the splashes is exactly as I want it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fill the selection with a color. So I'm going to come on to a new layer and I'm going to edit and fill. And then I'm going to choose a color, a nice light blue. There we go. And click OK. And now I've got that filled. I can deselect that. Control Command D. I can always select this again, of course, by using exactly the same technique as I did in the channels by going over to the thumbnail with the Control or Command key pressed down. Let's press Control or Command D there again. Now to make this exactly as I want it to, I'm going to press Control or Command T and then right click and choose Warp. Now I could of course go into other tools like the Liquify tool perhaps and push them around, but I think for me this is going to work just right. I'm just going to push these around until I get it sort of where I want it. I'm looking at that eye more than anything, if I'm honest. Put out the handles. There we go. Put out these handles just to warp that around a little bit. That's looking good. And pull this one down. And this one I want down as well. Okay. Might want that just over her eye a bit as well. There we go. All right. I won't waste any more time on that. I could spend hours just tweaking it. I'm going to click the tick and now I've got my splash the way that I want it. And now I just need to reselect that. So let's press Ctrl or Command and click on the thumbnail of that. And let's throw that away. I'm going to come onto my background layer and press Ctrl and Alt. That's Command and Option and J to jump or duplicate the layer and have the new layer dialog box. And I'm going to call this one Splash. There we go. And click OK. Now I've got two layers, splash and background. There's my background and there's my splash. Let's come onto the background layer and then choose a new adjustment layer. And I'm going to choose black and white, which I can always come back and tweak a bit later. But for now, I'll leave it as its default. Then on the splash layer, if I double tap here, then I get my blending options and my layer styles. I'm going to add a little bit of bevel and emboss. And you can see that it's a really tiny amount, just one pixel of size and soften. And my depth is 84%. I'm going to click OK. And let's press Ctrl or Command 0 to zoom back in. And you can see the effect that this is having. It's working really well. Now, I don't want the splash effect on her eye there. So I'm going to add a mask. Here we go. And then with a brush set to black and 100%, I can just mask that out. Just like that. There we go. Good. I'm also going to mask out these bits around the outside as well. I don't think they're adding anything to my image. It might be nice to see that the paint splashing off her face, but artistically, I don't really like it. I'm going to make a bigger brush just so I get a nice soft edge along the edge there so it looks a bit more let's say believable, even though this isn't a believable effect. Now I want to add a little bit of color to the lady's eye here. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit and I'm going to make a selection. So I'm going to make a selection using the elliptical marquee tool and select her eye using the space bar just to nudge it back into place. There we go. Now I want to delete that part of the selection at the top there. So I'm going to press Shift to add to the selection, but Alt. So now I get this cross, uh, X next to my cross there. 
and that means only where the two bits of selection meet will end up being selected. So I can just take that off, nibble it away, if you will. I'm going to come down to adjustment layers again and choose solid color. Choose something funky, maybe the pink there. Click OK and then change its blending mode to color. Reduce the opacity right down somewhere down there, maybe 13 percent. Control the command zero to come back out again and we can see what's going on. There we go. Take that down a little bit more, maybe 10 percent ish. There we go. All right. Getting there. What I'd like to do now is add a little bit of definition to the splashes. We've lost some of the uh, shadows here. Before I do that, let's uh, have a look at some of the blending modes, see if they help. Let's go multiply. Now, it doesn't really help get any of the definition, but I do like that effect. Uh, let's try one of maybe one of the lighter ones. OK. All right. Let's try soft light. Always got to try soft light. And let's try vivid light just for the heck of it. You may like that effect. It has its place, so certainly. But for me, I'm going to go back to multiply. I think I kind of like that. Let's add some definition. I could use dodge and burn tools. They're very good here in Photoshop CC and they're just as good in Photoshop CS6, but I still like to work old school. So I'm going to come down and create a new layer. I'm going to press Alt or Option when I click on new layer. So I get the new layer dialog box and I'm going to call this one D and B. And I'm going to say, give this a color. Let's call this gray, but I'm also, that's just the color that's going to show up here, by the way. Give this a overlay blending mode, which allows me then to fill with a neutral color of 50% gray. I'm going to change this gray just so we don't confuse ourselves to blue. So you can see where it comes and I click OK. You can see that it's just marked as blue there. Now, wherever I paint white, it will get lighter. And where I paint with black, it will get darker. But I don't want to go too heavy with this. So I'm going to change my opacity here to just 10%. Oops, 10%. There we go. And then I'm going to use black as my foreground color. And just come in and very gently just come in. I'm going to take this down even further to maybe 5%, just so as I can add some shadows in there and around here and underneath the eyes. Now I am using a Wacom tablet, so it is pressure sensitive. So uh, I can be a little bit more careful. There we go. That's about enough. I'm going to come up and just come up with a bigger brush here, just so as I can darken this over the top there, just a little bit around here. OK, Control Command Zero to fit it back on screen. Now what I can do is I can add a texture to this paint. And of course, all these steps are totally open for you to do whatever you like. I'm just being artistic as much as I can be. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and choose a uh, a texture that I've got from Photolia. Control and Command A, C, and then back over and V. Control and Command V. Control and Command T. Copied and pasted it exactly the same as I did with the splashes. I can bring this on here, bring it down, click the tick. And I want to add a mask to that, and I want to mask just to the splash. Well, there's my splash layer. So using that technique again of pressing Control or Command and clicking on the thumbnail, we'll select that. And then I can create a mask for that as well. Let's change the blend mode. Always try soft light first. It's just the way that I am. And we could try also multiply, should we wish. If we want to darken it up a little bit, I'm going to go with maybe overlay. That's kind of interesting. That's nice. But I'm going to bring the opacity right down. OK, that's looking pretty good. I put this under the dodge and burn layer as well, just so it picks up some of that dodging and burning. I have to excuse the noise. If you can hear a little bit of a rustling going on, it's because my cat has decided he's going to climb all over the furniture here in my office, which is a bit distracting. But anyway, uh, so there we go. We've added all that together and we can play about with this as much as we like. We can change the black and white. We can give that a little bit of color. Maybe if we reduce the opacity, we can bring back some of the original color. Um, I kind of reasonably like that, actually. Not too much. Let's bring it down quite a lot. OK. Interesting. OK. And uh, yeah, all right. I'm going to go there. I could play all day. 
put a border on it do whatever you feel maybe take some of the texture off of the lady's lips here might be an idea and uh, from her eye and around her hair anyway there you go i'm eric grano thank you very much for joining me don't forget to come over to tipsquirrel.com and find even more photoshop goodies until next time bye bye for now